Hey everybody, Rob Orgel. In today's video, we're going to look at the Rifle Speed Gas Control System. Now, before we get into it, let's first talk about the merits of this gas system. First, this toolless modularity of rearward gas allows us to increase reliability and longevity of our weapon. In addition to that, we get to finely tune our weapon for exactly what that rifle wants. And then when we switch ammunition, we can increase and decrease as necessary to include the toolless manipulation of that gas. And probably my favorite benefit is going from suppressed to unsuppressed without the need of tools and still have all the modulator you need to get exactly the right amount of gas speed coming rearward. All right, let's get into it. Now that you're ready to select the rifle speed adjustable gas control, let's find the right one for you. So the first measure we're going to take is from the front of the receiver all the way to the shoulder where the gas block goes. So I'm going to run the tape measure to the shoulder and then to the forward edge of the upper receiver. This gives me about 7.25. You can take this measurement the other direction just the same. And again, about 7.25 to the shoulder of where the gas block goes. This is going to tell us how long of a gas tube we're going to need. Next, let's measure the inner dimension of what gas block will require. So to do so, we'll look at where the gas block is going to go in front of the shoulder, and we can use calipers to measure the outer dimension, which will become the inner dimension of the gas block, and this measures 0.75. If you don't have calipers, an easy solution is to take a piece of paper and simply wrap it around and then butt it up against the gas block shoulder. And you can see I put a little tick mark right there. You can do that with a permanent marker or pen and then lay it flat on a table and measure with a tape measure. And here I have 2.25 inches. And that again tells me about a 0.75 outer diameter of my barrel where the gas block is going to go, which means an inner diameter of a 0.75 for the gas block. You'll find most commonly 0.75s with the occasional skinny profiles, which are about 0.625. You'll also find some fatter ones. So it's important to measure so that you can ensure that you get the right gas block. Now that you have the right diameter of the gas block inner dimension, the right length for the gas tube, we can now measure your handguard. As we measure your handguard, we want to measure outer edge to outer edge. Here we have a 12.6 inch length. If it's installed onto your weapon, then quite simply from the front of the receiver, measure to the end of the handguard. And here we're seeing that same measurement of about a 12.6. Now, we can take all of the dimensions we have written down and take it over to the rifle speed gas control configurator. As you drop into the drop down menu, each measurement for your system, you will find several no go and go options, and it will recommend the right gas control length for you you will find that there will be a few, typically, options in the green. That green options with longer and longer lengths means you get to choose how much of that gas control sticks out from underneath the handguard. In many cases, it looks good to have it nice and tight, and some people like to have a little bit more room so that gloved hands can gain access to and make those adjustments as necessary. Now, you might already have a gas tube that fits your specific barrel and gas length, However, Rifle Speed uses a straight line gas tube, and a standard AR-15 gas tube has a bit of an uphill slope to it. This will not work on a Rifle Speed adjustable gas system, so you'll have to purchase a Rifle Speed straight gas tube. All right, now that you've selected the correct Rifle Speed adjustable gas block for your weapon system, it is recommended that you purchase the Rifle Speed Armors bench block. This way you can set your adjustable gas system into this block so that you can easily install your gas tube. Installing your gas tube, you have a gas tube that needs to face downwards towards the barrel. And then you will see where the cross pin gets installed. Driving this into the gas system and then aligning that port to the hole within the rifle speed adjustable gas system. Now in some cases it helps to have a small set of pliers so that you can align the gas pin in place. And then you can lightly tap with a hammer to begin placing it inside and pin the gas tube in place. Okay, now that we've got the pin started, we'll use an oversized pin pusher to drive it the rest of the way in. I like using an oversized one so that one, I have to worry less about precision alignment and two, I'm less likely to over penetrate.
Now that the pin is all the way installed, we can remove it from our installment block, and then we can apply it to our barrel system. To install to our barrel, we're going to slide through the barrel and onto the collar while aligning the gas tube to the upper receiver port. In some cases, a drop of oil as you get close here can help, depending on how tight the fit is. Now that we've got it generally installed, we can flip it upside down. And we're going to use the supplied set screws. Now we're only going to install these lightly for the time being until we get them precisely aligned. Once we have them precisely aligned, we will then go back and use high temp Loctite. Now that they're lightly installed, we want to align them so that the gas port on top of the barrel is directly in line with the gas tube. Once it's aligned, we will then tighten one of the set screws until it's tight. Once it's tight, it's a good idea to check your alignment again. There are several techniques for checking your alignment. I like looking directly down the barrel, and as I look directly down the barrel, I will look up to make sure that the gas tube is directly in line above the barrel hole. Now, to set everything in place, I will remove one of those set screws. Once I've removed that set screw, I will put some of that high temperature red Loctite on that screw. And then I'll reinstall this screw. Once installed, I'll give a little bit extra pressure onto it and then wipe clean any excess Loctite. One more time to check alignment, just to make sure everything stayed exactly how I want it to before that Loctite sets. Okay, now I'm going to remove the other screw and then apply Loctite to it while using the other one as a placeholder so that I don't lose that perfect alignment. Now, of course, we have properly installed our rifle speed adjustable gas control. However, of course, you might have an existing gas system already in place. To remove that, much like how we installed this one, you might have two set screws underneath. As well, you might have pins you have to remove that go across that gas collar. Understand that some of these, particularly on M16 style A-frame sites, are directional. So it's a good idea to measure those pins and make sure you push them out the correct direction from the small side. This will make your life a whole lot easier. As you're removing the set screws from underneath a previous gas system, if you have used Loctite, you may need to put heat to that screw in order to release that Loctite. On your gas plunger, you should see two different rotation indication grooves as disassembled. Once assembled, we should see only the first indication groove. If the first groove is showing on position six, that means you are a full rotation out too far. What that looks like in the assembled platform here, this is position 12, and we see one rotation indication groove. As we drop down to position 6, we should see it tighten closer into the gas block until we reach position 6. We're now at position 6, and only one of the grooves can be seen. That's a good indication that it is properly installed. If you're on position 6 and you see a second groove, you will need to go a full rev and pass the indication point past one. With the gas system properly installed and the Loctite having set, it's now time to reinstall your handguard. Many handguards operate in different fashions. However, this handguard slides over, as most do, and over the barrel nut. As it does so, this specific type 
has an auto index, so it aligns to the upper receiver. Making sure that the handguard is aligned to the upper receiver, we will then reinstall. Here is our index. Once our index is in, for this specific upper receiver handguard, we have two set screws. Now that we have the handguard reinstalled, it's a good idea to make sure we still have full access to our gas control and we can still tighten and loosen all the way through our settings within our gas control system. Once our gas system has been tested, it is now time to reinstall our charging handle and bolt carrier group. Once our full upper receiver has been completed, we may now reinstall our lower receiver. Now we'll select our muzzle device. Once our muzzle device is properly installed, it's time to head to the range. Now that you have the gas system installed in your weapon, once you have it fully reassembled and get to your first range day, it's a good idea to put the gas system in setting 12. The higher the number, the more gas back pressure you should see out of your weapon system. It's a good idea to start by testing it in the unsuppressed setup. Look for cycling, extracting, ejecting, and feeding. And as well, look for last round hold open. Last round hold open is an indication that your rifle has gone through a full cycle of operations and has returned rearward all the way into that weapon system to create last round hold open. Also, it's a good idea that once you find last round hold open and you find the choke point in which you no longer have last round hold open, your ideal setting will be just last round hold open. For example, if position eight gives you last round hold open and position seven does not, it's a good idea to use position eight for your recreational shooting and competition shooting. However, if you're going to use this for a duty or home defense, it's a good idea to give yourself one or two ticks more of gas. For example, position 10. This will ensure reliability in case you switch ammunition or it's particularly cold or dirty. This guarantees the cycle of operation of your weapon in a more catastrophic type situation. Now, once you apply a suppressor, let's use the same concept and choke the gas down about five or six settings of less gas, we should be again seeking last round hold open. Now we have found many different suppressors have many different levels of back pressure. So your suppressor will be specific to your gas system. It might hold open at five and then not hold open at four. That's an indication that you'll get reliable operation out of five. And like before, if this is for duty or home defense, it's a good idea to give yourself one or two more ticks of gas than necessary to do more than cycling the operation, just in case something happens. All right, before we move into disassembly, reassembly, and maintenance, let's look at a few other items that come within the package. One, there is a barrel cross pin. This is designed specifically to make the system more robust and guarantee that there is no forward movement of the gas control system. It is recommended to use this for heavy use application to include law enforcement and personal defense. To install the barrel cross pin, it may require the help of a gunsmith. In addition to that, there is an extra plunger. The installed plunger is a 917 plunger and this will tune perfectly with the vast majority of AR-15 style rifles. However, if you're in need of more gas, the additional plunger is an 887 plunger. This will give you more gas to increase the gas rearward movement. All right, now let's move into disassembly and maintenance. To disassemble your rifle speed gas control, you'll open it all the way to position 12. Once it's at position 12, you will press the tab down just a little bit to get over the rotation stop. Then it should come out the rest of the way very easily. Once you've done that, you can remove the plunger ring and the plunger. With these removed, the last piece will be the spring. Now your rifle speed adjustable gas control is fully disassembled. And we will come back to disassembly for maintenance. In the meantime, let's do reassembly. To reassemble, you will use your spring, keeping the open part in line with the plunger channel. 
you will then use the plunger and plunger ring to align to the same hole and slide over the threads. Once you've done that, you will use the bumpy side of your gas control to screw onto the front of your gas control. You'll begin to hear audible clicks, and then you'll get to position one where you'll have to lightly depress the plunger ring, and then you should be able to continue all the way back to position six to do the test we mentioned earlier, showing only one indication groove along the plunger. This is properly reinstalled. Now, for maintenance, it's a good idea every 750 rounds to do an exterior cleaning. That means taking an AP brush or all-purpose brush and just scrubbing around the plunger as well as putting a little bit of oil around that plunger. Every 1,500 rounds, it's optional to disassemble the gas control and clean the interior of where the plunger exists. However, in all reality, most of us are not going to do much maintenance on a rifle, and instead, we can just place oil on the plunger itself at the end of each range day. It's best to do this at the end of the range day. This way it has time to settle and break free any carbon buildup. So your first round on the following range day will push all that remaining carbon out. Once you have the opportunity to tune your rifle speed adjustable gas control to your rifle and suppressor, what you should find is that on positions one through four, your rifle will give you reliable last round hold open with your suppressor. Without your suppressor, you should find reliable bolt hold open on position four through eight. However, if this is not the case and you're having any issues with your rifle speed adjustable gas control, feel free to email support at riflespeed.com. And if you need an additional plunger, one will be provided for you free of charge. In this video, we covered the benefits of the rifle speed adjustable gas control. We also applied how this information pertains specifically to suppressors, installation of this gas system, as well as disassembly, maintenance and operation, and testing for your first range day with your new gas control system. For more information, check out riflespeed.com where you can find technical data about the interior measurements and a much greater breakdown into assembly and disassembly. In addition, you will find a blog this blog contains a lot of useful information as it pertains to handguards and much more technical specs and pairing. If you like this video and you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.